The movie begins with John Winger, a down on his luck cab driver in Louisville. He struggles with passengers who quickly run off before paying. Just in time, an annoying woman carrying several heavy suitcases must soon be driven to the airport. He drives recklessly, and the woman spits rude comments about his driving. When she tells John he's a terrible cabbie, he abandons her in the cab in the middle of the bridge and throws the car keys into the river. As he returns to his apartment, he sees his Mustang being repossessed. He tries to stop them from leaving but fails. He also ends up dropping and ruining the pizza he brought. John tells his girlfriend, Anita, that he had a bad day and quit his job. He promises to straighten things out, but his girlfriend scolds him for saying the same excuse for six months already. Fed up with him, she decides to leave, ignoring his plea. Meanwhile, John's best friend, Russell Zimsky, is bored with his job teaching English to immigrants, as they need help understanding him. The language barrier prevents him from teaching them anything, he can only show them how to sing to do run run. He then meets John at his apartment. John feels lost and frustrated and shares that he's considering joining the army, hoping for a fresh start. Russell tells him he's crazy but still supports him, and they sign up together at the army recruitment office. Upon arriving, they quickly pass the interview and sign a few papers to join. Then they are led to board the bus to transport them to the camp. At the training base, they meet their drill instructor, the no-nonsense Sergeant Hulka. When Hulka addresses the recruits, John cracks a joke thinking Hulka didn't hear him. So, he makes an example of John by punishing him with 50 push-ups outside the hall. The men later have their heads shaved and are given their uniforms. In their first march out together, John and Russell rally everyone by getting them to sing Do Wa Diddy as a cadence. Each man introduces himself and tells the platoon why they chose to join the army. One recruit, Dewey Ox Oxberger, says he wants to lose weight and gain the respect of his fellow trainees and women. Among their squadmates are Ox, Cruiser, Psycho, and Francis. John, the last to speak, tries to suck up to Hulka by comparing him to a big toe while the group is the foot. However, Hulka needs to be more impressed and orders everyone to sleep. The following day, the platoon is wakened out of bed at 5 a.m. When John suggests sleeping more, Hulka changes their agenda from a 5-mile run to a 10-mile. Because of this, John suddenly finds himself out of favor with his comrades. During basic training, John and Russell struggle to adapt to the military lifestyle. They clash with Hulka, who is determined to whip them into shape. Despite their initial difficulties, John's sense of humor and quick wit begin to win over some of their fellow soldiers. As the days pass, Russell tells John he wants to give up and leave. The next morning, they both take a military plane, hoping to hitch a ride wherever. Russell shares that he took some pills that Elmo gave him, which could help him when he gets sick during the flight. John sees it and reveals its acid, and Russell says he unknowingly took six hits. Suddenly, the plane is boarded by another platoon. Luckily, John convinces the commander they are superior intelligence on a top-secret mission. They later jump out of the aircraft with the other soldiers. Out of luck, they soon find themselves in an unknown jungle and get trapped by a rebel group. Russell gives them the acid he brought, which they put in their food, thinking it might be salt. Because of that, they sneak away and reach the same military plane from before, hitching a ride again. The recruits continue their training and prove to be total screw-ups. Colonel Glass, one of the base commanders, tasks Stillman to find a platoon of fresh recruits to be dispatched to Italy for a publicity campaign. They will take part in the introduction and testing of the EM-50. This new urban attack vehicle is a Winnebago mobile home modified with cutting-edge surveillance, communication, and weaponry. Stillman takes the assignment and searches for a suitable platoon. One night when Hulka addresses everyone in the barracks, he's aware that a few of the men have been sneaking out of the base at night without permission. John acts like he'll step forward with Russell but tricks his friend. Russell is punished with 24 hours of garbage duty, while the rest of the platoon is ordered to spend two weekends on kitchen patrol. When Hulka asks John what he thinks of their punishment, he responds bitterly, earning him a private conference in the restroom. Then, John challenges Hulka to either expel him or get off his back. To teach him a lesson, Hulka permits him to take a swing at him to teach him a lesson. When John does, Hulka quickly ducks and hits John in the stomach, doubling him over. He tells John he intends to make him a soldier who respects discipline and that their private meeting will someday mean something to him. Later, John attempts to leave the base but is stopped by Russell, who tells him he has decided to complete basic training because of him. Russell wrestles John on the ground, trying to knock some sense back into him. Two beautiful female military police, Stella, and Louise, come across them and escort them back to their barracks without reporting them. In the obstacle course, Hulka has his men climbing a rope to the top of a small tower. When Cruiser couldn't make it, John challenged Hulka to do it himself. Hulka makes it effortlessly and then invites any recruit to come up and knock him off the platform. 
Not far away, Stillman observes a mortar practice and orders one of the men to fire his round without any coordinates. The shell flies toward Hulka and blasts out of the tower, making him fall off. With Hulka on indefinite medical leave, John's platoon is left leaderless. That night they go into town and end up at a strip joint featuring mud wrestling. John urges Ox to take on two women at once for a bet of $400. Ox is thrown around the ring by his opponents but gains an advantage in the second round when he pulls off their bikini tops. The police suddenly raid the place, dragging off everyone but John and Russell. Then, the two are met by Stella and Louise, who take them back to the base. Before they escort the men back to their barracks, they are tasked to inspect the base commander's house, General Barnick. Despite their objections, John and Russell join them and inevitably spend the night engaging in intimate relations. Meanwhile, Stillman reprimands Ox and several others for being arrested. He also tells them he'll report them to Barnick to repeat their basic training, despite being set to graduate the next day. Later, they arrive back at the barracks and find their disheartened comrades. Russell claims he can prepare them all for graduation in the few hours left. Russell tries to lead everyone in rifle drills, but they all begin fighting. John, who has a natural talent for leadership, begins to take charge and motivates the group to excel. Despite their unorthodox methods, they spend the rest of the night practicing a routine he made up. On graduation day, most of Hulka's platoon is missing during the first part of the ceremony. Just then, Hulka's platoon quickly marched onto the parade grounds, singing a rhythmic cadence and coming still to attention just in front of the stage. General Barnick asks where they've been, and the platoon enthusiastically shouts that they completed their training without Hulka and launches into a joint rifle drill that impresses Barnick enough that he assigns them to the EM-50 project. When the platoon arrives in Italy, they are greeted by a recovered Hulka. They're shown the EM-50 and are told they'll guard it at night. John and Russell are ordered to take the first watch and quickly get bored, but they are thrilled when John suggests they take the EM-50 out for a joy ride. John wants to drive to Germany to meet with Stella and Louise. When Stillman arrives at the hangar with a date, he finds the EM-50 gone and gathers a small group from John's platoon to find it. As they travel towards Germany in the rain, Stillman orders them down to the wrong road, and they drive straight through a Czechoslovakian border checkpoint. They encounter a Czech patrol a few miles down the road and surrender immediately. Moments before they're caught, Hulka repeatedly advises Stilma to turn back, but he refuses. Then, they see the enemy blocking their way, and with no other choice, Hulka jumps out of the back of the truck and hides in the woods. He later radios a distress call picked up by John, Russell, Louise, and Stella in the EM-50 in Germany. The code they receive from Hulka indicates the team is on an unsanctioned mission and that the US State Department won't even acknowledge their capture. John realized their platoon came looking for them, and it was their fault they'd been captured. So, they decide to rescue them. At a Soviet-operated base just inside the Czech border, Hulka observes from the nearby woods. At the same time, two of his soldiers are beaten up by Soviet officers. Meanwhile, at the Czech border crossing, Stella and Louise create a distraction while John takes the two guards as hostages and ties them up. They use one of the guards' uniforms in their truck to gain entry to the Soviet base. Though John doesn't have much of a plan for penetrating the base and finding their comrades, Russell begins activating the weaponry systems of the EM-50. Shields cover the windows, guns emerge, and they take off, looking for their comrade's truck. After a few minutes of searching, they find the truck near the building where their comrades are being held. John and Stella sneak into the building and find Cruiser sitting in a chair outside the locked chamber. When Stella uses an explosive to blast the door open, it doesn't budge. Inside, Stillman begins to panic, blaming the platoon for their mess. Ox becomes enraged and charges Stillman, missing him but successfully smashes the door down. Outside, Russell uses more of the M50's defenses to fight off Czech troops. They're forced to retreat temporarily before John, Stella, and the others emerge. When they see a tank coming, they flee and are trapped by more Czech soldiers. Suddenly, the EM50 reappears and blasts the tank, disabling it. Everyone piles into the EM50, and they take off. During their escape, Hulka can jump onto the roof and hangs on. They drive quickly through the border checkpoint and arrive safely back in Germany moments later. Back in the US, Russell, John, Stella, and Louise arrive at a hero's welcome. They gain popularity and are featured on the covers of different magazines. John is the new Uncle Sam as he appears on the cover of Newsworld, endorsing the new army. As the new teen heartthrob of America, Ox is featured on the cover of Teen Magazine. Much to his dismay, Stillman is transferred to a weather station near Nome, Alaska. As John spots Hulka waiting on the tarmac, Hulka initially pretends to offer a handshake but instead salutes. John returns the salute with amusement. The movie ends as Ox leads the march, with the rest of the platoon singing, Do Wa Diddy. 
Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.